All right, guys. Today we're going to do a demo on uh, how to use uh, different types of glassware. And so uh, we're going to have three different glassware, as you can see here on the procedure. Uh, we're going to be using a 10 ml graduated cylinder. We're going to use uh, a 100 ml biometric flask just to contain the uh, water that we're going to measure and uh, deliver into a 100 ml biometric flask. Uh, 10 ml uh, biometric pipette and a 50 ml burette. So again, it's gonna be just three pieces of equipment. This one is just to, to be used as contain, to contain uh, if we do a great job, if we do a good job, after 10 uh, deliveries of uh, 10 ml of each, uh, of, uh, each portion using a different uh, biometric glassware, we should get, and I'm gonna walk right now to the uh, biometric flask, we should get the bottom of the meniscus touching this line here, which will tell us that we got exactly 100.0 ml of water delivered here. Now, uh, the first piece of the equipment we're gonna use, guys, is uh, 10 ml graduated cylinder. This is not, this is not uh, an, a very accurate, a precise uh, equipment to measure your uh, uh, volumes delivered, uh, much more precise, uh, you will see guys, uh, uh, when, when we produce the uh, results will be the volumetric uh, pipette 10 ml or 50 ml uh, burette here. But again, when I as a chemist work uh, and try to deliver something very, very uh, exactly, very accurate, I should say, and precise, I'm going to use of course a 10 ml uh, volumetric pipette. And of course, when you examine this pipette, it's a class A equipment, and it has a tolerance of uh, plus or minus 0.02, so you're pretty much certain in the hundreds place in here, which is, uh, so I wanna just show it to you guys here. Let me probably flip it this way, otherwise it's upside down. And so this is my choice will be if I actually do the real chemistry work. So what we're testing here, pretty much, which of the three volumetric uh, glasswares, which of the three will give us more accurate and precise results? And again, when you read the procedure, guys, we describe, uh, in definition of terms, we describe and define accuracy and precision. And accuracy, apparently, as you guys already finished chapter one, you know it's the, how close uh, your measured volumes, in this case, will be to the true value. Now the precision, when you do multiple measurements and uh, the, how close these measurements are among uh, each other will pretty much define the precision. Now uh, towards the end of the experiment you guys are going to find the, uh, you will have to do the calculations uh, pertaining to accuracy and precision and uh, uh, you will get, we'll mention that later uh, in the video, but for now let me just show you the technique guys. Alright, so my first uh, step will be to pretty much, I'm going to of course follow the procedure as you all guys should do. I'm going to come in here now to the balance and uh, uh, of course uh, you want to make sure that the zero on the balance is here. Alright guys, so now we at the balance and uh, what you want to do always is to check if you got all zeros, the balance has to be teared. So I just uh, want to show you how to tear the balance, you just press the, uh, the OT button here. And so we got zero mass. I'm going to take my 100 ml volumetric flask. This is where we're going to uh, measure the volumes, the masses of the volumes. And uh, I'm going to use a cap in here to make sure that when we do the measurement of the mass of the water, it doesn't evaporate. So I'm putting it right now in the center of the balance pan. And I'm going to let it let it stabilize the mass. So now we're good to go. So I'm going to document it as 55.5357. Okay. All right, so there was yes. So there was a little drift in the balance, but now it's all stable. So I just documented this is a 55.5357. Okay, my next step will be 
Now, again, the way you want to hold your uh, stopper is between your, uh, I guess, between your fingers here, because if you put it on the bench, you're going to cross-contaminate it. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna fill this one up with water up to the 10 ml mark. And remember, always make sure that your bottom of the meniscus touching the line of 10, point, of 10 ml. So if I deliver a little more, I'm gonna take care of it with the transfer pipe pads. But for now, I think I'm doing absolutely great in here. And as you can see, now the bottom of the meniscus, now bottom of the meniscus here, touching the line, and that's when I know that I have 10.00 ml of the water here. Okay, so my next step, I will be transferring now the 10.00 ml. I already know the mass of the empty volumetric flask. So I'm transferring right now inside of that volumetric flask. There's a lot of drop, I need to get it out. And uh, put the stopper back. Usually I like to twist it to keep it tight. And then go back to the balance and uh, retake my uh, mass measurement here. Okay, so again, uh, I'm gonna let it stabilize and I already got my uh, first uh, mass of the 10 ml, 10 ml water delivered by 10 ml graduate cylinder. Okay, it says 65 here, 39, 76. And uh, what I can do now is to determine my mass of water by taking now this mass and subtracting 55.5357 grams, uh, which is a mass of empty 100 ml volumetric flask. That will give me the mass of water in grams delivered by this 10 ml graduated cylinder. So what I'm gonna do next is that I'm going to do it nine more times the same procedure. I'm gonna generate the data, and after that I'm gonna to move to the next uh, uh, volumetric glassware, which will be 10 ml volumetric pipette. All right, guys. We just uh, did another 10 replicates of the procedure I just demonstrated, and uh, we produced the following data here. Uh, we also, as a courtesy, we uh, provided guys the calculation of the mass of the water, which you, in the next steps, you will, for the other uh, volumetric glassware, you will have to perform yourself. And uh, the final column here, you will be using the density values in table five, it's all the way to the end of the procedure. And you will figure it out, guys, the volume of water in milliliters using the density. And what's important here, when you find the density of the water, you will have to use the uh, temperature that we provided here 20.8. We measured the water we used for, for this particular experiment and it came out to be 20.8. All right guys, our next uh, uh, step is to do the uh, volume uh, deliveries of the, of the water, guys. We use this little water by 10 ml volumetric pipette. Uh, to do so, we need to aspirate the liquid inside of the pipette and the a uh, little uh, this apparatus will do it so we'll do it is our uh, three-way valve pipette valve and uh, it has certain uh, buttons here these buttons are uh, having certain functionality and uh, let's say this take a look at the first one it says air valve here it's a stands for air valve here on the procedure we pretty much delineate the uh, already kind of function of it but to be more exact and precise describing this function is what it does, it creates a vacuum by pressing, by pressing the A and uh, squeezing the bulb. We create the vacuum right now and once we attach it now to the volumetric pipette, I usually like to rotate it and I don't like to do it all the way like some of the students have seen done in the past. If you go all the way in, uh, it still will work, but uh, taking this uh, bulb out is, uh, is uh, some ordeal and uh, while you're taking it out, you may actually break it, causing injury. So, 
Now the pipette is ready to aspirate the liquids, but what does the S and E button stand for? And uh, what they stand for is that this button S will be uh, used for aspirating the liquid inside of the pipette, and the E, once we got the correct volume in this pipette, we will use to empty the uh, pipette and it will deliver the volume to the receiving vessel. Okay guys, so we're back at the balance here and as you can see the balance is not teared. So we need to tear the balance here by pressing tear. Now we got the zeros. So we're gonna again take the mass of this empty 100 ml volumetric flask. So I'm gonna document this mass of my procedure. As 55.4985. And I already measured the temperature of the water. It was 20.8 degrees Celsius. All right, let's pipette. And again, your procedure uh, very well describes how to do the routine pipetting. And uh, we'll proceed now. So before I pipette, before I can aspirate the liquid, I have to press A, squeeze the bulb to create the vacuum in here. With this vacuum, I'll be able to now aspirate the water inside of this pipette. And always what I want to do is to saturate the walls of the container by aspirating the, my first, my solution first time and then disposing it so that if there's any kind of dirt in the pipette or some kind of impurities present from the previous uh, measurements, they will be gone now with this uh, first step. Okay, so my pipette now is ready to go. I'm going to aspirate the liquids by pressing S button. And what I want to do is I always want to pass this uh, line of the calibration that has been calibrated to 10 ml right here, 10.00 ml. I always want to pass it. See, my liquid is above this line. The reason is because you always have a bubble here. And how do you get rid of the bubble? Well, you will have to use now another beaker to dispose the extra amount of the solvent, in this case, the water. And by touching the walls of the container, this bubble by capillary action will be just removed. All right, so I'm gonna do it now slowly by pressing E. And so my meniscus now is moving towards that line. And finally, I got my bottom of the meniscus now touching the line. And I'm ready to transfer this water into the 100 ml volumetric flask. As we're getting to the bottom, uh, to the tip of the pipette, you will see there's gonna be uh, a little bit of water left inside of the tip. Never blow out this remaining volume of the water. You always want to just touch the walls of the container, like I just did, you see that the drop just went right in, and count for about five, 10 seconds, after which you will just pull out your pipette. Now we're ready to measure the mass of the delivered volume. You gotta make sure this is all teared, it's all zero. So I got my, I'm getting my mass now. I'm putting it in the number one, mass of the water and volumetric flask in grams, number one. This is where it's gonna go on the table, in the data table, 65 point Four four five two. Of course, I'm going to remove now my biologic flask. I'm going to come right up here, and I'm going to start filling your data table here.
And as in the previous uh, example, with the 10 ml graduate cylinder, the way you're going to get your mass of water is you're going to take the mass of water and uh, plus volumetric flask and subtract the empty volumetric flask, you will get your mass here. And so let me get the first data point here. I'm going to do 65.4452 minus 55.4985. And as you can already see, guys, here is that we're getting a much more accurate result here, 67, uh, than in 10 ml graduate cylinder. The 10 ml graduate cylinder was hovering around 9.8. Here we got now 9.94. And if you use the correct density based on your temperatures, you will get a volume of the water delivered close, very close to the 10.00 ml. And that will tell you whether your which equipment is more accurate when you are, uh, your data is very close to the true value, which is a 10.00 ml. So, all right, guys, so we just performed nine more measurements using the same technique as uh, was demonstrated before. And uh, we gave you now the 10 data points for which you will be determining the average, which is mean, and uh, you will be determining standard deviation and relative error. Now, as you can see here, guys, this data here with the volumetric pipette 10 ml, which is class A equipment, and they remember the precision of this equipment was plus or minus 0 0.02, so it was in the hundredth place. And uh, these data points here tell you that you are very close to the 10.00 ml value. And you already can state out of these two equipments, the graduated 10 ml cylinder and 10 ml volumetric pipette, which one will be more accurate and precise, even just by looking at it. So our next equipment we're going to use, the last one will be 50 ml burette. So now we are back here at our workstation and uh, I'm going to prepare my 50 ml uh, burette. So you gotta first make sure that this is a clean, uh, it's, it's been cleaned. And one of the ways I clean this burette is by uh, pushing some uh, diesel water. And by rotation motion, I just clean all of the inside walls of this burette. I can see I got some accumulation of water here, so I have to be patient. It has to go all the way through down. And once it's, uh, it's all clear, I will uh, use my now sample to fill the burette. I will use about 5 ml of the sample. In the, my case, my sample is water, so I shouldn't be worried about it now. But when you actually do the real titrations, you should use the uh, titrant, uh, a little bit of titrant, about 5 ml, to saturate the walls and also rinse whatever the impurities, whatever leftovers from the water was there, to rinse it now with this 5 ml of the solvent, or in case will be solution, because you guys are gonna be now using a titrant. And the next experiment, we're gonna use sodium hydroxide as a titrant. All right, so we're pretty much uh, clean this burette with water. Now I'm gonna add, let's pretend this is my titrant here. I'm gonna pour, and the way you want to actually pour your titrant is you want to use a, a beaker here. Let me just uh, get my water going here. Let's pretend this is my sodium hydroxide titrant. I will just pour about 5 ml, it's a little less. And then I'm going to just make it the parallel to the ground, do a little, a little rotation motion to saturate the walls of this burette to make sure I remove all of the uh, previous solvent that was used here or solution. And then dispose this, remember guys, let's pretend this is sodium hydroxide. You can't just dump it into the sink. And I just get rid of it into my waste beaker here. 
And again, you will have to be, you have to be a little patient here. And at certain time, you will see that uh, some of it will be still here remaining uh, right at the top of the of the valve. Just again, we're going to give a little time. It's going to just go right through. There we go. So we got it through. So now I'm ready to pour my water. Let's pretend this is a real titrant. Some people like to use a funnel in here, but uh, I don't see any difference. As long as you're accurate, don't spill anything, you should be fine. Let me add some more. Okay, what I always want to do is I want to always pass this uh, zero line, uh, my titrant. And the reason for it is because you're always going to create a bubble right here in the tip of this burette. And as you can see already, I got the bubble here. So I need to get rid of it because if I don't, a titration is nothing else as a chemical reaction. And if you, instead of the, uh, I guess, reactant here, if you deliver air instead of it, then you're not doing the right thing. The air is just going to go into the air and the titrant, whatever was supposed to get in here, did not get in here to react into the receiving vessel. Okay, so the way I do it is I open up the, the valve and I gently tap on both sides. And I already saw that the bubble was purged out, but I'm going to do a couple of more times. Just make sure that it doesn't come out and spill a new one. Of course, goggles will be here. Is the proper PPE, of course. You have to always wear the goggles. And again, I'm going to do a third time. I don't see any bubbles here anymore. So my burette is pretty much primed now and ready to go. But before I start delivering my volumes with titrant, I want to, of course, adjust my volume to the zero. And the way I do it is by rotating, opening up this, this valve in here and making sure that my bottom meniscus here now is touching my zero line. And again, it takes a little practice here, but there it is. Now you got the bottom of the meniscus touching the zero line. I'm ready to go. All right, guys, we on the part three of this experiment. We're now the, doing the measurement of the volume using the burette. I'm going to repeat the steps I already did before in uh, part one and part two. I have to measure the mass of this 100 ml biometric flask. Again, I want to make sure that I got all zero here, all zero displayed on the analytical balance. So the way it displays, the mass displayed in here is 55.6063. I just documented it to my protocol, just place, just copy it into my protocol here. So I'm going to take this out now and uh, start delivering the volume. Actually what I can see now, now looking at the uh, second time, I can see now my meniscus is actually not really perfectly lined up, guys. You gotta be always careful. So I'll have to adjust it. I don't know what happened the first time, but I'm gonna make sure that this meniscus is absolutely perfectly uh, touching this line, the bottom of it. Here we go. So look, you always have to be, guys, vigilant when you are conducting these experiments. There we go. Now I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deliver again 10 ml of water using the burette. Okay, I'm going to lower the tip a little bit, I mean right inside of the receiving flask. The reason is because sometimes when you deliver the volume, it may not go straight, it may go sideways and you're going to lose your tight shot. Okay, and then we'll have to redo the whole thing. So now I need to deliver 10.00 ml. I'm almost ready. All right, let me do it. So I have to be 
here. When you generally do titrations, you want to do it initially a little bit faster maybe, uh, but then you have to slow down depending on the, uh, how close you're getting to the end point. But in our case, we're not really doing real titration, we're just delivering 10.00 ML. All right, once I'm gonna get close, I'm gonna start slowing down and deliver it job by job. All right, so I'm at about nine right now, yeah. So I need to be here. This burette is a little bit crooked, so it's not really lined up with the valve. Okay, so this is about nine, so I have to be here. Okay, almost there. There we go. So I just delivered 10.00 ml. I'm going to show you the bottom of the meniscus. There it is. It's a perfect 10.00 ml. Let's see how much we get in terms of mass. Again, this is 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, four zeros out of the decimal. So this one gave me 65.5663. Oh, again, I'm putting in the wrong space. 65.5663, okay, and the temperature 20.8 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna take off this off the balance. Okay guys, I did nine more times, executed the same procedure as I just uh, demonstrated before with the burette and I obtained this data. 10 data points. All right guys, in summary now, today we determined the accuracy and precision for three different volumetric glassware. One of which was the 50 ml burette 10 ml graduate cylinder and 10 ml volumetric pipette. So when you now analyze your data, you will determine the accuracy and the precision for each piece of equipment. And the accuracy will be assessed by relative error, where the precision will be assessed by standard deviation. And again, how do you know if your equipment is accurate? It will be very close to the true value and smaller the relative error will pretty much tell you whether your equipment is accurate or not. And again, smaller the relative error, more accurate the equipment is. Now, in terms of the precision, again, we're gonna do the calculation of standard deviation, and the smaller standard deviation mean more precise your equipment is, delivering a certain portion of the value. Higher the number of value for the standard deviation will mean that you don't have a very precise equipment. And uh, we're now going to come up here to the procedure uh, on page 10. We pretty much put up for you the sample calculation to determine the, again, standard deviation and accuracy. All you have to do now is use your values, just plug in your values, and Follow the formula. So let me just scroll down. So standard deviation will provide you the formula here. We define each term. We did the same thing for the relative error. And here in table four, I had my own data that I calculated. And I went through each step to actually plug now all of my data into these, into the formula here in the first place, first formula we set a deviation here. So we got here each term determined and plug into the formula. And uh, after the calculations were performed, uh, for my particular now measurements here for pipe heading, I got standard deviation of 0 
which is a very, very small value here, meaning that I have a very precise equipment here, piece of equipment here, and the relative error is 0.1%, which is, uh, means very accurate measurements are being done with this 10 ml volumetric pipette. Now, remember how I, I referred you guys to table five to get the density of the water for different temperatures? So this is where you guys are gonna find the densities for different temperatures. When we're using now the density formula to calculate the volumes of the delivered volume based on the masses we determined in each pipe bedding or using the burette or graduate cylinder to deliver the 10 ml volumes. All right guys, so this was experiment number three. We conducted this experiment in a demo mode. Uh, now, in order for you guys to get your credits for this lab, you will have to contact your instructor uh, on how to uh, submit your reports, the format of the report, and the form of the delivery. So again, you have to contact guys, your instructor, we provided all the data from the demo, and just please contact your instructor via the blackboard or email and you will be uh, instructed on how to deliver it.